Hey everybody, 1223 back over on the uh, on the, the back end of the yard at the Coopersville and Marn and uh, I come to find that one of their heavyweight coaches is off the ground and up in the air at the moment with the trucks gone. Uh, I do not know where the trucks are and I do not know what they plan on doing. Uh, my guess is whatever work is being done to this car might involve uh, parts of the CNO baggage. Now I do not know if this is true, but that's just my guess. But uh, this car is really off the ground. It's got to be. I mean, heck, I can look underneath this car, no problem. I'm six foot, so whether you consider that big or not, it's for you to decide. But this car is up in the air right now, and uh, they obviously want nobody around it. This is the Canadian National Commuter. Uh, interesting. It's got double pane glass. Hmm. But uh, this is similar to what the what the what that CNM passenger cars had in terms of trucks. These three axle, six wheel trucks. So. Uh, just thought I'd show that because that when this car was last shown, it was sitting on the main, uh, just doing exactly what they is doing right now, just sitting there. So, uh, this car is definitely getting some major work of some sort. Uh, I hope this means that the C and M might be starting to improve the condition of some of their equipment because it some of it's just pretty down south pretty fast so but anyway I want to continue to look around for the John Angler because I've yet to find the John Angler tender and cab tender and uh excuse me tender and chassis so I'm gonna go back here real quick and take a look and see where those are uh so I'm gonna steer clear away from this because they have they have red tape up here for a reason so uh, I'm going to continue to look around for the rest of the locomotive and maybe we'll see uh, what's going on with those 1223 out. Hey everybody, 1223 back here uh, down with the Wabash flat car and uh, I'm down here next to one of the cranes that the Coopersville Martin has and I think I had discovered where the axles and trucks of the coach went and uh, there's the journal boxes and here's what I believe are the axles because uh, they look like they they're pretty clean in certain parts which leads me to believe that they're used frequently which would add up to me saying that those are part of that car here's the journal box and there is one, two, three, four, five, six. There obviously is not enough journal boxes here, but there are six axles here, which there are six axles on that car. So I'm assuming that these are probably those uh, axles. And down here are the actual trucks themselves. Stripped of their journal boxes, and uh, obviously no wheels on them, and there is two. So that also kind of makes me think that uh, maybe uh, you know that these came off of that. So uh, I think. I mean, obviously they're doing something to the trucks. I don't know what. So obviously they maybe they might have discovered something because this car was, like I said, in use just a couple of months ago, and then was suddenly put away. So obviously something happened that I don't know about, which is fine. Uh, here is the 
the switcher. Now, I actually said this wrong originally. Along with down there, I said originally a Conrail. What I said was a caboose. I meant to say <laughs> it was actually a... Uh, uh, it's actually a boxcar. But, I'm th but uh, when I said originally down here that I thought this was a 44 tonner uh, I actually believe I misspoke um, this I believe is a later model 45 tonner because uh, just judging by the shape of the uh, locomotive uh, 44s would actually I think have a little longer body but most of the time, people associate the 45 tonners with having the connecting rods on the trucks. Uh, this one, I think, is later because I think some of the later ones did not have this. Uh, here's actually the builder's plate. General Electric. Diesel Electric. Locomotive. Class BB 100-100. 2GE 763-300. I don't know what any of that means. There's a serial number. 32850, built in February of 57. Erie, Pennsylvania, made in the U.S. of A. Cabs open. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think this is actually a 45 tonner and not a 44 tonner. So I was probably a little incorrect, which is fine because, uh, you know, people make mistakes every so often. Oh, oh, stick. Uh, Number 3049, I believe it's an ex-U.S. Army switcher. That's where most of the U.S. Army switchers ended up. Was, or that's where most of the ex-U.S. Army switchers are, was 45 tonners. Uh, now, an interesting note here. I'm trying to look around. I might have already walked around it. I have been told that this engine has a really rare, there it is, a really rare horn. Uh, obviously it looks pretty rare, it's a big horn for this little engine, and then there's the bell. Uh, but I do not know what the horn is or what it sounds like, but like I said, from what I have heard, it sounds like it is a rare when I heard it, there is a rare horn on this engine, and it is reportedly very loud. So, uh, but yes, I believe this is a 45 tonner and not a 44 tonner. So, um, kind of disappointing though. I cannot seem to find anything that involves the John Angler anywhere. So, I'm gonna head back this direction and see if maybe uh. There's one other spot I think they could be parked at. I'm going to go down there and see if that's where they might be. So, uh, 1223, out.